I have just finished writing some basic code for my ESP32 drone and it all seems to be working but there are a few issues. So over the past few months as part of the KiCad tutorial series we have been designing this uh, drone PCB with a ESP32. In the last video we saw that we have built up the drone fully and this time around I have written some basic code to get it to communicate with a ESP32 controller and have some basic control over the motors and some correction code as well. Obviously this is very initial code and there is a lot more to do. There are a few issues that I want to talk about as well, but before we do that, this drone is taking flight with today's sponsor, PCBWay. They make ordering prototypes and assembled boards fast, affordable and hassle-free. So whether you're just testing your very first design or scaling up to full production runs, PCBWay offers a wide range of options to fit your needs. The easy to use online platforms let you upload your Gerber files, select your board specification and get an instant quote. Plus, they provide excellent customer support to help you through the process. I've used PCBWay myself for many projects and their quality and turnaround times are impressive. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and supporting makers like us. Now let's get started with the video. So obviously for this project, I've got two sets of code that I need. One is for the remote control and the other one is for the drone. So on the left hand side, you have the remote control code and that is basically setting up the uh, pins for the analog joystick and the buttons and then setting up ESP now to communicate between the drone and the controller. So I have uh, two joystick uh, pins, one for X direction, one for Y. I'm not using the X direction at the moment, but it is set up. I am defining the drone MAC address and to find this, you, you can run a special code on your drone to see what the MAC address is. So this is the MAC address for the drone in question. I have my joystick pin zero and pin one. I have six buttons on my controller and they are mapped to two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm using a structure to hold the data that will be sent to the drone. So the joystick analog readings and the button readings as well. This is the callback function when data is sent. I'm not really doing anything at the moment with the callback function. So just basically, so at the moment it's basically debug that tells the user or myself that the data has been sent or it's failed to send data basically. Then in the setup, I have my serial. If I'm debugging, I'm initializing my pins. I'm starting the Wi-Fi, setting up the ESP now, registering the callback function, adding my drone MAC address, which we defined earlier. And in the main loop, I'm reading the joystick values. I'm reading the button states and sending that through ESP now to the drone. And there's some debug code over here. Um, I've commented it out at the moment because I know it works. So the code for the controller is very basic. I'm using ESP now because it's got a longer range than Bluetooth, although it's not as uh, power efficient. And I don't want to use Wi-Fi obviously because I need a base for it, which I don't want to do. So with ESP now, we'll be able to play with the drone outside as well. On the left hand side, we have the code for the drone itself. Now this code is a little bit more complicated, although this is, you know, first attempt to just get something working rather than a fully configured drone code, which obviously I have a lot more work to do. So if you remember from the previous video, we have a MPU 6050 as the gyroscope and the um, accelerometer on the board. So I'm initializing the MPU 6050. I'm using the MPU 6050 Lite library, which was suggested by Gemini. There are a few libraries that you can use. If we hit any limitations with this library, we can try something else as well. Then I'm defining a bunch of variables for kind of the drone control itself. So we've got target roll, target pitch, I'm not implemented a PID control at the moment, but I've just defined the variables for it. I want to use the buttons on the controller for forward and reverse direction. So if I press the uh, up button on my controller, I want the drone to kind of go forward and the joystick is going to be uh, just power control, so up, down, basically. And with the code, eventually, I want it so that the uh, stability control is automatic. Now, similar to the uh, controller code, I have a structure for the data coming in from the controller. I have defined the motor pins, so uh, pin 4, 33, 32, 25. I've assigned them to a PWM channel, defined uh, the resolution for the PWM and the frequency, I'm not 100% sure if this is the right frequency to use, but for the test code, it's fine. I will need to do some research on this to make sure I'm using the right frequency for drone control. 
So then um, basically we're getting raw data from the joystick and then we're doing the processing on this side. I am kind of debating in my head if I should do the processing on the controller side. So that just so that it's a little bit faster for the drone microcontroller to process the incoming data. Then um, there's three LEDs on the PCB for the drone and this is the pin definition. The communication with MPU 6050 is through the I squared C and that's on pins 22 and 21. So the clock on 22, the data line on pin 21. Now the callback function on the received data for the drone is a little bit more involved than the callback function on the controller. So everything important happens over here. So all the control processing happens over here. So whatever input data we get from the remote control gets assigned to variables and then the main loop will process that and do something with it. So this is uh, a test code I wrote very initially, which I need to delete now. But when I pressed the button, basically I was having one of the three LEDs light up. And this was just to test the connection between the drone and the controller. So reading the joystick data, mapping it to a throttle percentage. The throttle at the moment is directly increasing the duty cycle on the PWM. Then um, I have some basic code for kind of pitch and roll. What I'm doing is when I press the button, I basically reduce the um, speed on the motors on one side or increase the speed on the motors on the other side. And I'm hoping uh, eventually that will give me direction control. I've not been able to test how well this works at the moment. And these values I'll need to play around with as well. So on the setup code, we initialize the ESP now. We start the I squared C. We initialize the pins for the motors and the LEDs. Finally, we initialize the accelerometer as well. The only thing I want to do now is, so on the so in the main loop for the drone, we have the starting of a PID controller, which I've not fully implemented at the moment. So this needs a lot more work. What I have at the moment is basically target pitch and target roll is a combination of zero. Plus if I'm pressing one of the buttons for direction change or forward, backwards, basically things like that. So then I have target throttle, pitch and roll, and I turn that into a duty cycle. Once I've got the um, target duty cycle for the uh, motors, I'm basically making sure that it's constrained within um, zero and 1023, just because I was getting a bit of cutout at full throttle. And I think the motors were going over the maximum duty cycle that it could have. And finally, I'm writing the duty cycle to the motors. So again, very basic code in the loop. There's a bunch of things that I want to do in the future. First one is basically calibration for the motors. So obviously all four motors are gonna have some variation in the amount of thrust they generate. So I'll need to compensate that and maybe I can do that at startup. So we put the drone on a flat surface, power it on and the drone will basically go through a self calibration routine while by spinning up the motors and just sensing for a angle change. And as soon as it gets the angle change, um, it maps that to a zero. And then they can use that as motor duty compensation, which will be a plus number over here. And then I will also need to calibrate the gain. For that, I will need to get two different values. So obviously we have the baseline value, and then I'll need to obtain a different value, which I'm not entirely sure at the moment how to do, but there will be some resources available online that I'll need to do some research on. So this is all the code I have for the drone at the moment. And as you can see, it is working in terms of the communication and controlling the motors. It's not working in terms of flight. There are a few hardware things I want to talk about. So you will have noticed that on the PCB, there is a secondary board on there at the moment, which is a TPS 63020, I think, which is a bug boost converter. So it takes in the battery voltage and turns that to 3.3 volts. Uh, what was happening uh, with the old LDO that's on the board at the moment, so if I show you. So on the PCB, we have this LDO at the moment. The LDO cuts out above a certain um, throttle. So I think what's happening is that we have a poor quality battery, which is dropping voltage quite a lot as soon as you try to draw too much current from it. And that was causing the LDO output to drop below the 3.3 volts. And I think the ESP32 was kind of browning out as well. With the power regulator that I've bought, which is a book boost, it seems to be working a lot better. Obviously it's a hack at the moment just to get something working. I think the main reason why it's not working with the LDO is poor quality battery rather than anything else. The dropout voltage on the LDO is only 150 uh, millivolts, so it should not be cutting out. But I think the battery voltage is dropping too much when I power up the motors. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is try and find some better quality batteries and test it with that as well. So that's all I have to share with you today on the ESP32 drone that we're working on. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.